Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic and today we're going to be discussing how to pass arrays as parameters and multi-dimensional arrays. So one thing I didn't uh, show you last time was did you know that for an example if you're going to be accessing the same array in multiple subroutines or functions in the same class and if you have uh, constants for them so you already know uh, what they're going to be, you're going to define them just like here, what you can do is just cut it from here so I'll just cut this and then way up here I can paste it outside of all subroutines but still within the class so then I can get rid of it here I can get rid of it here as well and I believe that was all of them so I click save uh, I run the application again colors, there they are, if I want to sort them now they're alphabetized, if I want to reverse that if you click sort then reverse then it actually gives you the reversed alphabetized so that's really, really cool. As you can see, it's uh, alphabetized backwards. So there you have it. Now, also notice how in our colors click, which just lists them, there's a for each loop, then the sort for each, a for each. Well, why don't we, instead of copying and pasting this in every single subroutine, why don't we just make one subroutine that has this? I mean, why not? Uh, so let's figure out how to do that. So under our clear button, let's create, and let's close this clear button. We don't need that anymore. Uh, down here, let's create a subroutine called private sub, and let's call it, I don't know, the loop. You know, I'll call it for each instead. And inside, we'll throw in by vow and what we'll bring in will be that array element so actually I shouldn't type this out yet because I don't I want to show you and let's see here and we want the for each loop to go in there so I'll cut this and then I'll paste our little loop right here into our little subroutine but now how do we access that subroutine from another subroutine well we have to call that function right so let's type in the name of the function for each and then within the parameters, we have to type in our the name of the array. So I'll type in colors, just like that. And then we need a corresponding uh, uh, a variable right here. So by val, and then whatever you would like to call it. So let's call it, hmm, let's just call it, what should we call it? I'll just call it colors array did I do that yeah no I already did that uh, I'll just call it X they're in there like that as string so there we go so now we're calling an X just like this and now since that's now the name of the array we can't say in colors well we could because it's up here but let's just call it in X instead so that's something you should uh, bear in mind is if you can't have this up here then you'll need it down here then so but then you'll have colors down here and well anyways uh, so now in X and let's just copy this copy and paste and then paste so I click save let's run this application and see how it works whoops whoa oh dear and colors still works you can still sort them and you can still reverse them so that's really, really cool, and throw in more if you want. Sort all of them. Okay, so that's really, really cool. So that's how you pass them in. So in this example, you could still have used colors because it can be seen everywhere. But let's say you only defined, just so you know, if you only defined this array within uh, this subroutine, but it was the for each loop that you wanted to keep separate just so it's only printed once. Because let's say we had a bunch of different types of arrays but we want them, wanted them all to use the for each loop well then you just define each of those arrays in these individual subroutines and then use the for each loop in this one subroutine by passing in whichever array you want and we call it an X because we just called it X up here and yeah that's about it for the, this tutorial or excuse me that's all for arrays as parameters now the next thing I want to talk to you about are multi-dimensional arrays now how does that work well let's look at this little uh, poorly designed picture I made in Microsoft Paint. 
uh, before we've been working with single dimensional arrays so basically we would call this one colors we, we would call it red orange yellow green all these different things we would put in there so that'd be element one or excuse me the index one index two index three uh, and index four so we have uh, four elements here that go from zero to three well, we could also make multi-dimensional so with colors well of course we just put in colors right but what if we wanted to give attributes to each of them for an example so down here what if we want to create a multi-dimensional array that uses both the x and the y axis if you were to picture it and we would want to call that array species so uh, the first one we would call would be humans so that would be zero zero then element zero one we'd make it whatever size they have 0, 2 would be the primate, uh, then 0, 3, they're a sentient creature. And so basically the uh, the x number, so I actually have these wrong, this, uh, I have the numbers switched for x and y, but uh, you don't have to worry about that, just picture this and you'll be fine. But uh, all the x's are zeros, so that will pretty much tell us that we'll always be referring to some sort of attribute with the humans. And these two races are actually fantasy from the Halo universe, uh, but the grunts, every time we're, we have a one, we'll be referring to the grunts, and the elites will always be two. So let's learn how to access these. Well, first of all, we have to create it, too. Okay, so, first of all, let's uh, create three buttons for each species. So we've got a button right here, and I'll copy and paste. and we'll call this one the humans and down here we would call them humans then for this one we'll call them the grunts btn grunts and for the last one we'll call those guys the elites Okay, so first going into our humans, let's see by clicking this, let's see if we can create a message box that'll show us each uh, thing. So double click humans, and the first thing we need to do is, you know what, we should actually create a, a subroutine just like we did here uh, to access all those different uh, elements basically. So uh, first what we'll want to do is create a private sub here and let's call it species and we'll want to pass in some information in here as well and we want to have message box uh, dot show and then what will come up is the information so humans would come first and we actually need to create our information first so that's gonna, just going to be a little error for now so in here we're going to want to create our multi-dimensional array so type in dim species with our parentheses here as string and then right here we'll want to type in our highest sub so two three is our highest right here so I'll type in two comma three so now that's both of them and just to save on time there's no way am I gonna write out all this information so I have a little text document here uh, here it is in which now I can just easily copy and paste all this copy and paste there we go so all that information is now there and well if we uh, go humans first let's create a variable or you know what let's uh, call this so I'll go by val x as integer and then down here I'll type in species and then I'll type in what number we want to put in so if we're doing humans notice how all the human in, uh, elements have zero next to them so I want to pass in zero the number zero basically and so the number zero will be passed in here and then what we can do for message box dot show is we can print species 
and then in there type in whatever L, um, this number x here because that x will be zero so x and then the first one zero and plus a string plus species x whatever variable goes in there one plus that plus species and x2 and then the another empty string plus species x3 uh, so that should print everything and then after that put a comma uh, you know what we should go enter so species info and my but box buttons dot okay so there we go so now we have our humans button for the grunts we type in species one I believe that will work and then for the elites species two and uh, hopefully this will work this is another one that I did not plan ahead. There we go. Hu so I typed humans and it accessed all the human elements. Human, average sized, a primate, they're sentient. The grunts, short, they're an anthropod, they're sentient. And the elites are uh, tall, the reptilian, and they're sentient as well. So that is really, really cool. I really, really like uh, working with two dimensional arrays. Uh, in yeah, so we only had to create this instance here once. We didn't have to copy and paste this everywhere. And it's private within this one thing, so they can't be accessed anywhere else. And yeah, so basically what happens is this what, this number we put there will be passed in uh, as X here. And then once the message box shows pops up, uh, whatever you typed in there uh, will replace that number. So all the zeros are all the humans so and then we had zero one two three for the y-axis and then so on and just so you know I believe you can have up to thirty two dimensions believe it or not how that works I have no idea but it, but anyway so yeah so we just have an x-axis if you were to picture it for a one-dimensional array an x and a y for two-dimensional a three-dimensional array would look like a cube so you have an x y and z axis and then so on um, so yeah, uh, uh, if this, uh, I, I, I'm actually curious, if you've ever used a three-dimensional array or more, whether it be homework or if we're a company that you work for, please leave a comment. I'd be very interested in, uh, in reading that, and I'm sure other people would too. I mean, wow, three or more dimensions, geez. Uh, other than that, yeah, this, uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and uh, I'll see you next time.